There are many open questions about superconductivity, and one day we hope to find a superconductor that works at room temperature. This would fundamentally revolutionize the way we use electricity, completely changing many aspects, from building new advanced power lines to better interconnect the world with remote renewable energies, to highly efficient and powerful computers. But this goal has eluded us, with the only potential room temperature superconductor that's been measured requiring hundreds of gigapascals of pressure, which is just simply not practical, and these results are being called into question anyway. To find more potential room temperature superconductors, we need to better understand how unconventional superconductors work. One missing piece of this puzzle has finally been measured, the fourth signature of superconductivity, opening of the spectral gap. But what does that mean? Let's discuss it. Superconductivity is a state of matter in its own right, and it occurs when a metal is cooled down to the point where its electrons band together and form what are called Cooper pairs and condense. In this state, electrons behave as bosons rather than fermions, which stops the electrons interacting with each other and the other atoms in the metal, allowing them to move freely without any resistance. There are two distinct types of superconductor. Type 1 is elements like lead and aluminium, and typically have a very low critical temperature below 10 Kelvin. Type 2 are made of alloys, for example, yttrium barium copper oxide, and typically have a critical temperature that is much higher than a type 1 superconductor. Now, when these metals transition to becoming a Barden Cooper Schiffer or BCS superconductor, four distinct features are seen. The first is the resistance goes to zero, which is commonly what people think about when they talk about superconductors. The second is that magnetic fields are now repelled from the material, which is referred to as the Meissner effect. This can be used to levitate magnets. The third is that the specific heat changes of the material. At the transition from metal to superconductor, the specific heat increases, where the specific heat is a measure of how much energy is required to heat the material by one degree. And finally, there's the opening of the spectral gap, meaning that the electrons band together to form Cooper pairs. Being able to measure these different signatures of superconductivity is very useful for us to be able to understand what's going on in these materials. It also acts as a very good validation measurement. The recent controversy over the room temperature superconductor was based off the fact that people did not believe one of these signatures, where the question was whether the measurement of the reduction in resistance was sufficient to make this claim, among other accusations. For high temperature superconductors, the first three signatures have been measured, but the fourth has remained elusive. And for high temperature superconductors, this is one of the most important ones to measure. In type 1 superconductors, it's thought that the electrons both band together and condense into bosons at the same point, where in type 2 superconductors, it's thought that this might happen separately, that first the electrons band together and then they condense into bosons at a lower temperature. Thus, measuring exactly what the electrons are doing in these systems is very important for our understanding. In this latest research, scientists have used the technique of angle-resolved photoemission spectroscopy, also referred to as ARPES. This technique uses high-energy photons to excite electrons inside the material and then measure the emission from these electrons when they lose that energy. By measuring this emission with a high precision, the energy structure of the electrons can be determined. As such, this technique can be used to identify the states of the electrons in the material which can then be used to measure when the superconducting gap forms. Now, this is not a particularly easy measurement. Stanford professor Zizun Shin, who supervised the project, said this, This is the climax of 15 years of scientific detective work in trying to understand the electronic structure of these materials, and it provides the missing link for the holistic picture of unconventional superconductivity. We knew these materials should produce distinctive spectroscopic signatures as the paired electrons coalesce into the quantum condensate. The amazing thing is, it took so long to find it. Now that we can measure the spectral gap forming, we can hopefully start to identify new ways to create high temperature superconductors. Ultimately, ARPES is a very powerful technique. And now that this capability has been demonstrated, we are sure to see a lot of follow-up research on this topic. We will just have to wait and see. If you want to know more about interesting superconductivity, check out this video. Thanks for watching, have fun, and see you next time.